Yes, we're back again. And here we are with, um, I put out a few little extras just before I start. Unfortunately, Benny, I've played it so many times now that the CD is after, I don't know, jamming or something. So please get more music to us as soon as possible because we love your music here. I can't paint without it. Uh, I have my nephew now on again, uh, Kevin Nolan, another amazing musician. You know, I'm sure Benny would, um, Kevin should meet up at some stage. But anyway, I hope to get those new discs from you soon, Benny, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is, I sketched out just a little area here to quicken up things, just a little cottage area, and an idea of where there's gonna be a pathway. I put in that line there to remind us that we're going to have to paint around that in order to get a little bit of a shadow in there. But as I go along, I'll explain that to you. But first of all, we're gonna get in the trees in the background. Do you remember those lovely trees, cypress trees? And what we're going to use for those is the deep turquoise, okay? The deep turquoise, can you see that? Okay, add a little bit of water to the deep turquoise just to get that nice consistency. You don't want it too watery. You know, you don't want it too thick either. You know, you're not using a palette knife here. We're using brushes. Palette knife will show you at another stage, you know, that's another technique. But I think you can just get uh, just effectively more effective, in fact, uh, with brush work rather than a palette knife is leaves a certain mark all the time, whereas the brushes you can get any mark you want. Now, the idea is do you remember these little trees that we did before? Do you remember just moving out like that, like Christmas trees? Can you remember that, that idea going out and about each time? Okay, I'll show you. I'm going to show you this, this idea here just little strokes either side. Can you see that? either side of the trunk coming down right down there getting wider until they get down to the level wherever you want wherever your your trees are okay and then a shorter one maybe may beside it okay can you see that idea that's what we're going to do here to move across and i might move pretty fast i'm using my hand again to see to get a nice um, support now we're going to go for a taller one here to vary it okay and just watch me the way i move across quickly they don't have to be the same distance apart they can be, uh, you know, for instance, th th this one here may be a lower one. Look, I'm going to put it right in there, right up against the other one. You know, it's almost hugging it, you know. Okay, can you see that? With these, again, probably have to go over them again uh, in between the drying sessions. But it's just to show you exactly how to do it, first of all, okay. That's another one there. And then another guy here, then maybe the tallest one here right at the edge, just so as to hold it in visually, okay. Okay, we have that. Then we move across here. Do you see the way I have little walls here? So we're going to do an actual line around this. This is how you get around your house like this, okay? Or your little cottage. To, to mark it out, just do the line across first and that'll give you um, a guideline of where the trees will have to end because we want the trees to go all the way across the back behind them, okay? So I'm just showing you in order to get that definite uh, finish line for your trees just do the finish line for uh, the top of the line for the houses the cottages or whatever you know down as far as there okay so we know that so then we're going to come up here again okay we go up here with the taller one coming in there for you know a big distance now between those but you see when you come down to the line you see it hits that line and it's fine you don't have to do the same technique all the way down to the edge of the little wall or the cottage then we have another one here say around that size okay can you see the idea then maybe we get taller here, taller here behind, that we can vary them all the time, vary the height of these trees. You know, there's no uh, set height in this, in my paintings. They're not governed by the, the Forest Association or whatever it's called. Another one here then slightly taller again, we have him up here like that. Okay, going out there like that. Maybe this one slightly taller again. And then what happens is, oh, as we work along, you see, we can decide we're going to maybe have these ones taller because this is what happens in painting. It's all to do with adding and subtracting. Okay, then we have another one here, maybe taller again. And we have the end one taller, just coming out like that when we get to it. Okay, can you see that? This is like a painting in progress. This is how you work. This is how things develop as you move along. Okay, then we'll have another one here. This guy doesn't have to be too tall because we have a nice little space in between the two buildings there. Then we can go back up again to a taller one, okay. Taller one here like that, yeah, very nice, going in there. That's cool, get onto your line because we have it marked already. It's letting us know, yeah, that that's your baseline. And then maybe slightly smaller than that, okay. 
So do you see the way it's building up already? And I, the reason why I put in that line there, because it tells me where to stop and I don't have to fiddly dee, fiddly dum trying to get in the little shapes of the trees. Now maybe a shorter one here before we jump back up again. Jump back up to a taller one. Okay, just so as the eye is moving all the time across across the background area. Okay, can you see the way it's working all the way across? Then maybe we'll come down really close to that one and quite short, okay? Like that, grand, maybe put that one a little bit taller there. You're adjusting them all the time as you go along. That's the whole idea. And this is a great exercise as well for rhythm, for, for brush strokes, for, for working out compositions as well. It's a really, it, it might seem easy, but it's, it's actually exercising a lot of um, skills that you need when you're painting, okay? And then we get another one here slightly taller again and a bigger gap. As I said, I'm doing this quite quick to accommodate ye, because I don't want you falling asleep while you're watching it. Now do you see, okay, right out to the edge there, and that's the tallest at the edge there as well. We leave that guy here because he's nice and narrow. At least there's a tall one close to the edge there, which holds in our, our attention. Now, can you see all that there? I'll have to go back over that at a later stage. But what I'm going to do now is, while we have, uh, we're going to fill in that little building there to make sense of it, okay? The two buildings, and we're going to use a little bit of white, okay? And a tiny bit of the light aqua green, the turquoise. Okay, normally we'd use a, a, a light permanent blue for this building idea that I, the little formula I have, but this is going to change it slightly because it's called turquoise meadow, we're using different colors. And we're just going to go with the whole building, not, not the roof, the gable end, the front, and we're going to fill it in with all of this colour, okay? And it'll make sense at the end when we put in the highlights with white. Okay, and I'm using my little round brush, I should, I should have told you that, did I tell you? The little round brush, uh, just to get what Akiko loves, and which I love as well, but she's much better at using it than I am. She's able to paint amazing details with it. But uh, just in there like this to get that idea, okay. You can see the way it's working up there. I'm doing this very quickly just to show you, you know, what it's supposed to look like. But you paint what you feel, whatever you feel you need to paint, do it. This is just a guide, okay, to help you along the way. Now you see, we have all those little areas. You wanna get this area, because this is part of the, the whitewash as well, the uh, gable ends on the little building. And then the chimney up here, we have to put him in as well. We can adjust all these things later on, don't worry if they're not looking right at the moment. Now, can you see that? Brilliant. That's all we want for the moment there. Dry the brush. Now we're going to put a little roof colour in, which is a mixture of the light aqua green, okay, and the deep turquoise green, because we don't want it as deep as the, um, the trees. Okay, can you see that? Sorry, it's just sometimes I forget the focus on the camera, it's very limited. Can you see that there, the way I'm mixing it? A little bit of the deep turquoise. You can see the difference now between that and that, okay? So we're gonna use that, nice messy palette again. Twist your brush to get a more precise finish on it. And then we're gonna put in the little areas, the roof areas. Just moving on, you know, swiftly. Just we might need to brighten them at another stage, but this is just to show you the build up of it. Because as you know, there's a, a lot more that goes into it than this. This is, we're just building up, starting off with the under layers. And then the little roof here as well. Comes in here like that, okay. We probably will lighten it a bit when we get to that stage, but that, that's grand just to start off with. There goes my brush. Okay, cut it again. Now, we're gonna clean that brush, put it back. And now we're gonna start with our medium square brush. You know, I think it's a number eight, isn't it? Yeah, it's a number eight, the bright, or my square flats, what I call them. And we're going straight in now for our lovely um, light aqua green, okay? Or light turquoise, as I call it. Get that nice mix, okay, lovely mix. You can see already the way all these colors complement each other on the palette. Can you see that? The manganese, it's a bit muted, but when you start putting on these colors, you'll see what I mean, because it, it complements the cobalt blue as well, the manganese blue. Now we have a nice mixture there, not too much on the brush, and we're going to use the edge of the brush to start off, and we're using our directional stroke, okay, again. It doesn't matter if they're still wet, because we can, we're going to go over this again. And we're, you see the way we're doing it, over to the right, with the tip of the brush, just to get 
a little above that, for the want of a better word, horizon line, as if to push everything back, to push the trees back, to push the buildings back. And we're just following the little gaps there that, that, that we left of the cobalt blue. Coming across, see I'm using the, the tip of the brush, coming right across, right across to where we have our little pathway arranged there, okay? Can you see that? Coming across there, then on this side as well, coming up here like this. And you can see the different tones now. The roof is slightly darker again than this. And the gable end and the walls are a nice bright colour. But we'll be going over them again. But you have that idea of the, the lovely um, <coughs> magenta medium coming through. The same as the, in the painting's magenta ruse. But there won't be as much magenta in this one because we want the turquoise to really stand out. And then basically all we do is we just follow the line here that I've sketched in or that you sketched in as well in yours. Keeping the strokes quite thin up here. Okay. Quite thin. But then as we come down you can get them wider. Okay. And let that really rush in now. A sense of movement. You know. The Vincent van Gogh movement in the in the wheat fields and all that, you know what I mean? Just to, uh, and you can still let some of that manganese and the cobalt blue coming through. And they all play their own little individual part. You'll see it now. See the way I'm keeping to the edge of that there, just to make sure we still have that little path in there. Okay, we'll be coming back to that path again. Now I'm widening the strokes. Can you see that? Get that fantastic movement into it. And there's some impasto, you know impasto, that's the thick, thick paint coming out there which is grand because that's going to add another energy you know to the painting okay and that's it that's coming down there like that in there all the way down there make it a little more uneven at the bottom we don't want it too even because we don't like evenness coming back up here with more strokes onto that you know more strokes of the light aqua green you know to get that lovely movement into it again as if the wind is blowing through it you know well, not the wind, maybe a gentle warm breeze, you know, hopefully. Um, and there we go up there at the top as well, up there. As I said, you can stop this video at any time to look at the strokes and, and, and to practice your own strokes. To practice your own strokes as often as you want. Make this line a slightly bit uneven. You don't, you don't want a very even curve on it or whatever. Just a few little strokes coming in there as well. But we'll get, when we get to that, I'll show you what we'll do, you know. It almost disappears down towards there where it goes in into some little area there maybe the night might be a little vegetable garden in here just close to the house you know there's one all these wonderful little ideas you can think of you know okay now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to stop here because we've come to the stage where we have to in my technique with a celebration of color where we're going to have to dry it to go on to the next stage and it's, I'm so excited already with this stage, it looks fabulous already. See with the blue cobalt blue again? You can understand the importance of it and you'll see a little bit of the manganese coming through. Okay, so don't go away, we'll be back shortly. Okay, thank you.